In the same manner that there's some unusual words and phrases and sayings used in Appalachia, you'll often find some unusual names too, or at least some unusual pronunciation of names. A lot of times people ask me about my name, Tipper. You know, I, sometimes people will say, uh, well, I, that's a really unique name. Your parents must have been really cool. Or the only Tipper I know is Tipper Gore. Is that who you're named after? Well, neither of those are true. Well, now, Pap and Granny were really cool, but they didn't give me the name, is what I mean. So when I was learning how to walk, I have an older brother, Steve. He's about five years older than I am. And since I was the baby, he was worried about me, and he was worried that I would fall. Um, when I was learning how to walk, especially I had some kind of little walker thing that they would put me in. And instead of saying she's going to fall, Steve started telling them she's going to tip over, she's going to tip over. Well, he worried about me tipping over so, so often that somehow that turned into Tipper. So while Tipper's not my given name, it took over my given name at a very, a very early age when I was learning how to walk and I become Tipper. Now, I was always Tipper at home. In places where I was, my given name was used was at school or at church, and in those days, mostly school, I was I was too backward to say, you know, please call me Tipper. That's really who I am, what I go by. But my family always called me Tipper, so that's the story of my name. My mother, Granny, that I talk about a lot, she has a unique name. Her name is Luzine, L-O-U-Z-I-N-E. And the story behind her name is, is that when her, way before she was ever born, when her parents, uh, Charlie and Gazzy Jenkins, when they were uh, just married, they went out to Swannanoa, out to Buncombe County, North Carolina, to work in the logging camps. And Granny Gazzy was a cook, and Charlie, of course, worked in the, in the camps as logging or whatever it was they were doing. Well, he got sick, and really sick, to the point that they had to end up taking him to a hospital. And there they discovered that he had three kidneys instead of two. So they did an operation to remove his third kidney, and after that everything was okay. But during that time, of course, as you can imagine, they were away from home. They were really scary. In those days, I can't imagine how scary it would have been. And he had a nurse who was named Luzine that took care of him. And the story was she was beautiful. You know, she was so kind and, and so generous to him. So uh, several daughters later, <laughs> Granny was uh, the third from the youngest child born to a family of 11. But he named, he wanted to name her Luzine after that nurse from so long ago. So that's a, an interesting story. And while we're on the subject of Gazzy, that was her name, Gazzy, my Granny Gazzy is what I always knew her by. Um, and, and the story goes that Gazzy is a play on the word Gazzy, ga excuse me, a play on the word Gaza, it's hard to say Gazzy and Gaza, out of the Bible. So that was where... Um, her name Gazzy come from and that at changing it from Gaza to Gazzy with an IE is, is a unique thing we'll talk about in a minute with other names but first for her name she was the first grandchild born on both sides of her family when she was born uh, she was a Truett and her mother was a Hyde so on both the Truett side and the Hyde side she was the first grandchild born so both grandmothers wanted the, the new grandchild the first grandchild on each side to be named after them uh, so they named Gazzy, they named her Gazzy, Susie, Anna, Martha, Jane, Truett. So that was her name, quite a long name for that first grandbaby. She went by the name Gazzy uh, instead of all of those. That's the one that, that she went by. And in that same way, like I said, that her name was really based on the name Gaza from the Bible, uh, and they changed it to the IE, Gazzy. That often happens in Appalachia. We do that with a lot of words. We'll change the ending of the word. Sometimes we add a letter. Sometimes we add an ER or an A where it doesn't belong. But uh, other names that come to mind, like Gazzy, is uh, Sarah. Sometimes we'll change that to Sari. Suri, depending on how you say it, but Sari or Suri. Matt had an aunt Cora that was changed to Corey, and that's actually where our Corey's name come from. So Corey to Cora to Corey. Corey is really just named Corey, though. Um, other ones that come to mind like that, sometimes we'll add an ER to the end of the, of the name. So um, Ina might become Einer, uh, Edna, Edner. So it, it seems really strange, I know, but it's very common, very common. And a few weeks ago, I wrote about it on Blind Pig and the Acorn because I was thinking about names and I was thinking especially about those that we changed the letters of, you know, that was primarily what I was thinking of. But um, 
but I, I when I wrote about it, I got a tremendous outpouring of comments from people sharing unique names from their family in Appalachia. So I'm going to share some of those with you. But it also reminded me of several years ago, I wrote a whole series about um, a church over in the Smoky Mountain, um, Great Smoky Mountain National Park, Okuna Lufty, which is also called Smoke Mott, depending, it kind of goes by even Lufty Baptist Church by several different names. But it's one of the easiest places to access if you're ever in the area and would like to visit it. It's just a short walk to it. Some of those churches and uh, or historical places are a far piece, as we'd say, you've got to walk a far piece. But that one is a really short walk, and it's a, a very beautiful place right off the side of the, the main road, so it's easy to find. Anyway, I did a whole series of uh, posts about it, and the girls ended up singing in the church, and it was just this whole culmin culmination of series uh, of posts that culminated with the singing in the church. But during that time, I actually... I found a book, Okana Lufty Baptist Pioneer Church of the Smokies, 1836 through 1939, and it was written by Florence Cope Bush. She wrote another book that's one of my favorite, Dory of the Woman of the Mountains. But the book, it lists over a thousand names just from church records, people that had went to church there over the years. And, and I was just amazed by the names. And I remember I spent one afternoon just kind of jotting down my favorite ones. Uh, and if I had seen that list before we had Corey and Katie, I, they might have ended up with a different name. I think at the time I said I might have named them Hasseltine, that was one, or Eximnia, or uh, Sopralda, or Jessome. Those were all names that I really loved. But, uh, and some of the names in the entries were initials, and that's common here where I live too. So sometimes people go by initials just because that's what they go by. But in, my, in the situation where I live, there's actually people that that's just their name. There is no other name. It's just initials. So there's several men uh, that loomed large in my life and in my childhood that come to, not, to, come to mind, uh, LC and JC and AJ, uh, just to name a few. But anyway, the book had several of those in it too. Um, and so I was going to read you a few of those names, and I'll spell them because I know my accent uh, it may leave something to be desired if you're really wanting to know about the name. But L-A-R-E-N-T-I-N-E. Larentine Barton, Larentine Barton, Emma Nine Beck, E M I N A Beck, M E J Beck. So see, that's one that might have stood for something, or it might have just been that was their name, M E J. Palestine Beck, Palestine, of course, I'm sure come from the Bible. Tenzi, Tenzi Beck, T E E N Z Y Beck, Emer, Emer. So you wonder about that one if it was supposed to be something else, but it's E M E R Bradley, X Mine, X Mine, E X E M I N E Bradley, Minerva, M A N E R V A Bradley, Moaz, M O A S Bradley, The Docia, I like The Docia, T H E O D I C A Bradley, Zadok, Z A D O C K Zadok. Umphrey, Umphrey, I like that one. U M P H R E Y. Rentha. So Rentha, I wonder, of course, these were names written down. The same thing happens. I've got a comment I'll share with you in a minute, but about like census. Sometimes these were written down by people that may not have known the whole name, but they were like, well, that's Rentha. They didn't know what her whole name was. So it may have been Corinthia or something like that, but Rentha, R I N T H A. Um, Arbazina, Arbazina, A R B A Z E N A, Bushrod, B U S H R O D, Bushrod, Greddy, I like Greddy, G R E T T I E, uh, Darkus, D A R C U S, Etter, E T T E R, Terzy, T U R Z Y, uh, Clearacy, C L E R E C Y. And, and that was Clarice Ann, Clarice Ann Griffith. Uh, Celinda, C E L I N D A, Celinda Harris. Severe, there was a name, Severe Husky, S E V E R E, Husky. Uh, Arbusher, I like that one, A R B A S U R E, Mac, that was Arbusher Mac. <clears throat> Pudan, P U D A N, Matthews. Uh, here's another, let's see, we had Arbusher, and then we've got Arbazina, so they were big on those, Arbazina, A-R-B-A-Z-E-N-A, uh, 
Phil Dan, like Poo Dan, we've got Phil Dan, F I E L D A N. Interesting one. This one I really like, and it sounds like one we would use today, Pleasant. So Pleasant Roberts. Hosey Ruff, H O Z S E Y, H O S E Y Ruff. Uh, Marsipia, Marsipia Watson, M U R C I P A. Uh, there's the Hasseltine that I liked that I thought I might have named Corey and Katie if I'd known that. H-A-S-E-L-T-I-N-E, -E, Hasseltine Bradley. Now, the Bradleys had some unique names. Uh, Biddy, B-I-T-T-I-E, Biddy Connor. Cluria, C-L-U-R-I-A, Cluria Beck. Corda Beck, C-O-R-D-A Beck. Makes you, I, I'm guessing they were related, but makes you wonder if they were sisters. Uh, Murphia. M-E-R-P-H-I-A, Murphia Connor, Dice, I like Dice, D-I-C-E, Lambert, uh, Mrs. Callenbar Lambert, C-A-L-U-N-B-A-R, Callenbar Lambert, Shady Bells, now ain't that a great name, Shady Bells, S-H-A-D-Y, Bells, B-A-L-E-S, Algeria Dowdle, Algeria Dowdle, A-L-G-E-R-I-A, Jesso May, that was the other one I thought Corey and Katie might be walking around with that if I'd only known about it. J E S S O M A Y. Pollard, P O L L A R D, that was Pollard Reagan. Jesso May was Jesso May Redman. Um, Parley, P A R A L E E, Parley Treadway. And Rube Broom, R U B E, Rube Broom, B R R. Or, excuse me, B-R-O-O-M-E, Rube Broom. So those are, and that was the O'Connor Lufty Baptist Church, Pioneer's Church of the Smokies, 1836 to 1939. That was where the, there was a list of over a thousand names. And I'll put that information down below. I don't know if you can find that book. I don't think that I had the book. I think that someone let me borrow it is how I, how I got to see it. So then I'm going to read you some of the fascinating comments that people left on the blog the other day. I, I have the best blog readers, just like I have the best subscribers on YouTube. So Debbie said, we have so many odd names in our family. Annas, Farbus, Buster Nile, that was the real name of her daddy, of my daddy, she says. Gilly, Winnie, Tatum, Pert. My Aunt Emma was called Emmer. There's that change in the uh, letters like I was talking about. Blanco. America, and they called her America, Merky, Merky, I guess, Merky, M-E-R-K-E-E, -E, she says, Delma, D-E-L-M-A, and they called her Delmi, so they changed it, Delma, that I-E to the I-E, D-E-L-M-I-E, -E. Elijah, called Lige, Lige is a common one, uh, even here in Brasstown, in days gone by, the list goes on and on, I love all things Appalachian, and many thanks and blessings to you, so that was very sweet of Debbie. Joey says, I had a second great-grandfather named Pinkney, Pinkney, P-I-N-K-N-E-Y, a great-aunt named Della, they called her Deller, there's the E-R again, and a great-grandfather whose name was Staples, which I have always wondered where it came from because I've never heard that one anywhere else, Staples. Larry says, some of the family names I've thought of here in East Kentucky, a great aunt, Delilah, but they said Lily. They called her Lily. Paulina, they called her Pliny, Pliny. Sarah, they called her Sari. That's like I was saying about changing Sarah. And Aunt Thelma, they called her Thelmy, Thelmy. Lucille, they called her Lucy. A mammal, uh, Bertha, they called her Berthy. That's another one, Berthy. And Barbary, also, you'll hear Barbara. It changed to Barbary instead of Barbara. Anyway, okay, back to Larry. I'm not sure this fits, but had an uncle named Emerson we called Sam. I thought of two aunts in my wife's family, an Aunt Cora that they called Corey, like Matt's aunt, and an Aunt Dorothy called Dude. They called her Dude. So I have a dude in my family, too. She's passed away now, but uh, makes me now wonder if her name was Dorothy. I don't know that. I just always knew her as, Dor as dude. I need to find out. So Carol says, my mother's name was Leona. Her family always pronounced it Leone, Leone, instead of Leone, Leone, Leone. 
Uh, it's interesting you think about even the way we pronounce stuff and I'm, I'm like got an ear for language as you probably already know Appalachian language or people accents people talking so I have a, a really good group of friends and uh, one of my friends is named Julia so I've noticed over the years that some of us say Julia Julia we put the Leah on it and others call, say Julia 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 or Julia so there's a, it's very slight, but it is a distinct difference. Now, all of us are born and raised right here, but it's funny that some of us say Julia. We put that emphasis on the uh, and others just say Julia. Um, interesting. So Kat said, my maternal grandmother died before I was born. Her name was always pronounced as Lou I-Z, Lou I-Z. When I was a teenager, my mom decided we should go visit the old graveyard up on the high mountain where new owners of the land had paused their decade-long strip mining. We took a picnic and brush clearing tools, and we kids climbed in a pickup truck bed. After a rocky ride, the road leveled out at what mom once knew as her home place. We all took a hoe or a rake, and she directed us toward a far corner where graves were mostly marked by a big rock for a headstone with a smaller one as a footstone. My papa had used some of his meager coal stripping money to buy his first wife a real marker, and I saw her name there, Louisa. So they called her Lou I-Z, Lou I-Z, and her name was Louisa. So that's the difference in the pronunciation. So Ron says, my grandmother and her sisters were named after states. My grandmother was Virginia, Jenny. Her sisters, Maine, Maney, they called her Nebraska, they called her Brasky. Kansas, they called her Canny. And he says, I used to think it was weird the parents did that, but now I think it's cool that they dared to be different. Paula, one of my great-grandmothers was named Sophroni. They called her Froni. So that's S-O-P-H-R-O-N-I-A was her name, and they called her Froni. D said, I've heard Velma called Velmer or Velmer, L-V to L-V. And in 1961, my good friend Donna had returned from her first year at college and wanted to go down south to my grandparents with me for two weeks. My grandmother knew her name was Donna, but she called her Diner, Diner, even though she had heard me calling my friend Donna. We never thought to ask why. On my father's side, he had an aunt Swepter, who was the oldest child of his grandfather, and I had never heard that name before. So it's S-W-E-P-T-E-R. S-W-E-P-T-E-R. Uh, but Don, her grandmother called Donna Diner. Interesting. So Pinnacle Creek says, You really touched on something that is very noticeable even today. I do genealogy and it is so common to read those old census and see names spelled just like they are pronounced by either the census taker or the family reporter. The last letters are dropped and replaced by Y. My own dear grandmother, Ida, was always called Idy by Grandpa. Later, the children all pronounced it correctly as Ida, but in days gone by, many family names were spelled and pronounced as Sari for Sarah, Annie for Anna, and so on. Less common, an ER was added, as my Aunt Edna may have been referred to as Edna. I love anything about Appalachia and their nicknames and change in pronunciation is just a part of what makes it unique. I had not thought of this for ages, but I once read many years ago that a very popular name in our area is supposed to be unique to the area. The name is Dreama, D-R-E-M-A. I must have read this before Google, as a fast Google makes no mention of this. I know many Dreamas, and I think it's a pretty name. I had never heard the name Tipper until uh, Tipper Gore and then me. So Patricia says, my great-grandmother, Ora Barnes Vick, had a sister named Homer. Homer passed away shortly after her 18th birthday. My great-grandmother Vick, who died in 1979, just six weeks short of her 100th birthday, never spoke of her, at least in my hearing. When I was bitten by the genealogy bug in 1999, I learned of Homer from the cemetery books produced by the Sweet Ladies of the County Homemakers Club, which seems to be a Kentucky thing as far as I know. These ladies risk copperheads and rattlers, chiggers, mosquito bites, bulls, and poison ivy to painstakingly record every known grave in the county. Some of these cemeteries hadn't been used or maintained for 60 years and could no longer be accessed by even a dirt road. A few, sadly, were small family burial grounds and old home places that had been used to pasture cattle for decades. Some were barely readable even in the early 1960s when the first two volumes were printed. 
I will be forever indebted to these women. It was my privilege to thank some of them in person and through notes to the county genealogical societies of the four Kentucky counties where the earthly remains of so many of my ancestors now rest. I started my family history later. Uh, all who came before me were gone. Not a practice I recommend. The two ladies who climbed a steep bluff to record Homer's grave assumed it was the grave of a man. The inscription, inscription read, Homer Barnes, D-A-U period, daughter of Cornelia and Emmanuel Barnes. But it was so weathered that you could only decipher the abbreviation for daughter if you knew what it would say. A second cousin found a labeled portrait of Homer in her late mother's things. She was most certainly a young woman. Lima is another strange to me family name, but there are several Limas in the cemetery book. I am a direct descendant of a Lorenzo Dow Andrews. Researching this name, I found that many Southern families have a Lorenzo Dow uh, surname, whatever their surname would be. Lorenzo Dow lived from 1777 to 1834 and was a famous traveling evangelist. I also have a Horatio Gates Lane ancestor named for one of the less successful Revolutionary War generals. One of my great-grandmothers was named Tabitha long before it became a popular girl's name in the 1970s because of the TV sitcom Bewitched. She pronounced her name with the accent on the second syllable, unlike today's Tabitha's. Ed says, there are a lot of unusual names in my family tree, but my favorite is Happy. Happy was my great-great-grandmother. Her real name was, I think it's Hapuk, H-A-P-P-U-C-H, Matilda Gibson. Hapuk was a, probably a shortened version of the Bible name, Corinne Hapuk. Corinne Hapuk was the youngest of Job's three daughters. Happy married John Sadek Smiley. So happy married Smiley, isn't that great? Uh, Ed, or Papaw, is a frequent viewer of my videos. He watches them all, so he can uh, leave a comment and put the names as they're pronounced if I butchered those. Tammy says, I had a granny named O.C., O-C-I-E, O-C, and a grandpa named Beamer, B-E-M-E-R, Beamer. Mary Lou says, Tipper, I knew a Lodi and a Lynchy, spelled as they were called. Mary Lou grew up in the marble section of Cherokee County. Now, the next one's really interesting because it's someone that's commented on my blog for years, and I've always loved their name, and, but I was saying it wrong in my head when I seen it, the way I would have thought. I thought it was Yesidra. Yesidra is how I was saying it. It's spelled Y-E-C-E-D-R-A-H. But this is what she said. Well, this has really helped me with my odd name and the trauma that it has brought to me, LOL. My name is what I thought was Yesidra, Y-E-C-E-D-R-A-H, as I said, but she said it is pronounced with the Y silent, Acedra. Acedra is what it's called. Her name is Acedra. My papa gave me this name. Finally, at 35 years of age, I began to find out a little about it. My papa and his siblings were raised in a Methodist orphanage in Mississippi. They had friends in the same place that were of Latino or Hispanic background. I discovered my name is spelled incorrectly. It should be I-S-I-D-R-A, Isidra, I-S-I-D-R-A. I never knew where the names came from until I figured it out. Papa's brother had a daughter named Lutetia, L-U-T-E-C-I-A, and my papa named his daughter Annie Juan, Annie Juan, A-N-I-J-U-A-N. Then I am born, the next girl in the family, so I get the really weird one. While growing up, most people would not even attempt to pronounce it, but now after this post, I sure don't feel so bad about my name. I was called Seedy as a little girl because my friends just couldn't say the big name. I hope you enjoyed hearing some of the unique names that can be found in Appalachia. I love those old names. As I said, if I'd seen that list first, Corey and Katie might be Hasseltine and Jessamine today. I really love those old names. I hope that you'll leave a comment and, and share some of the names that you think are unique in your family. And maybe it's the ones that, um, like Jessamine and Hasseltine, or maybe it's just ones like my name, Tipper, that have just kind of took over someone's real name, where their nickname took over and become, become their name, become who they were known by. 
As always, I hope you'll continue to drop back by often as I celebrate Appalachia, which includes so much about language, whether it's words and phrases that we're maybe tweaking the end of the word, tweaking the way it's said, or if it's names that we do the same too.